ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video today we are taking the phoenix a320 service from hamburg to zurich uh, for those who may have looked in the past on my channel know that this flight has probably been my first flight i've ever done or recorded for youtube um, i think it was the first pretty sure it was and uh, yeah, so we're going to do it in MSFS, so we have a comparison between seven years, maybe even eight. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. Today we're not going to be using FS crew. I'm simply going to do everything myself. And um, yeah, get to it. Alright, first things first. Master switch is off, mode select to normal. Weather radar off, predictor winter system off, gear down, wipers off. At least 25 and a half. One, two. Exterior lighting all off. Additional power can come on. That works. White lights, air conditioning checked. Fault lights are normal. The electrical panel fault lights are normal. That's fine. We'll set the ADRS is to nav. We're gonna go ahead and set the cockpit lighting as well. I don't need any of the integrity lights. That can all go. Now I'll go over to the EFB. We'll start the EFB. And you would normally check the um, EQRH and all the documents are up to date. Everything's up to date. The In our company, the or my company, the uh, tablet, the EFB gets updated every seven days. Uh, so that's something you would check to make sure that's up to date and um, yeah not to say I'm a pilot I'm not a pilot but um, I have have uh, real world access so to speak alright so um, a cars we're going to go ahead and initialize that ATSU AOC light in it we're going to go ahead and initialize the data for weather, we're also going to do a weather request. We'll take a look at our messages. So, weather data 09 is at 8, variable Cabo K27 13, NH1020. That's fine. So, we'll go ahead and set 1020 in here. And we're going to continue go to data, AC status. And now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Go and clear the messages. Um, check the aircraft type A320. CFM engines are checked. Nav database is up to date. Now, normally you would also see here on the right in green, you'd see the the most up to date nav database. It does not show that. Here's the caveat. It does not show the um, database that is loaded. It shows the most up to date database. So really, you have to check the date. Next, I'm going to change the change codes or the um, idle and performance factors. My company uses negative 3.5 for the standard A320 series on A319, A320, and A321, and uses zero idle factor for the NEOs. And because the Phoenix um, currently does not properly burn fuel, or burns about 10% less fuel than the real airplane, we're going to do negative 9.9, .9 and plug that in, and then hit clear. So that the FMGC also calculates the 10%. Um, decrease okay let's go to init we'll do init request and we'll verify that the flight plan shows up all right so to Zurich and alternate is Geneva that's all checked we'll go ahead and put the flight plan in uh, the flight numbers well it's not Lufthansa we're not flying Lufthansa I'm used to flying Lufthansa <laughs> um, was there a total to alpha and um, that is checked. We'll do the aircraft acceptance. A recall. Hold for three seconds. Make sure nothing has been emergency canceled. That's fine. Studies of the aircraft is fine for now. And off system for normal. Check the logbook. Check all the um, MEL, CDL items. And the OBBs, which are also on the tablet normally. And updated, obviously, every seven days. Um, so we don't have that kind of access. So we're just going to assume that. Nothing applies to this airplane. This airplane is perfectly in perfect. It's in perfect shape, and as Airbus has would like it to be. So we're going to continue with the preliminary performance determination. We already got our ATIS, or not our ATIS, but we got our weather, set our Q and H. 
We're now going to continue with the uh, performance calculations. We're going to start with importing the flight plan into the tablet. There we go. Departure performance. Row 5 is correct. Sync flight plan. This is one ton more than what we were planning with. Flaps, uh, sorry, packs off. Anti ice off. Toga, no. Flaps will leave. And uh, I'm pretty much assuming it's going to go with flaps. Oh no. Well, I was going to. I was assuming it's going to go with flaps too. Alright, so flaps 1, 68, 149, 149, 151. That's about. That checks out. Nothing too weird. And um, we got a company message, which is most likely the preliminary load sheet. Except. I will do it before a walk around. So oxygen pressure is checked. Jolly quantities are good. Engine oil quantities are good. The flaps are up in indication degrees. Boiler to storm parking brake set. Active pressure is not in the green, but sufficient. Um, we could do a recycle to check the brakes if we wanted to. Um, which is normally done on the first flight of the day. But we're going to go ahead and scoop today. The emergency equipment is all there. All stowed, which is checked. And uh, yeah, we'll also clip the charts. I'm going to go ahead and set, uh, check my charts, check the flight plan a little bit, and uh, I'll be back here momentarily. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get GSX started with boarding. Boarding requested. And uh, we can do the same here. Go to Phoenix. Mass and balance. Load. And fast time. We'll do the overhead scan. Filling, so that stays off. Do you want to board crew? Passengers boarding starting. Let's check passenger count today. 150, so this can stay in normal. Um, temperature is no, is not too hot that we need to set it to high. Um, we'll go ahead and set it to cool. Here we go. Let's blow 60 amps within 10 seconds, so that's fine. Fuel pump stay off. Need a fire test. Alright, and set the PA is set 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Data, and also it's good here. And the aft overhead, also no normal lights, circuit brakes are all in, everything is good there. Um, there are some circuit brakes actually on the, I forgot the Phoenix does have some pop circuit breakers by default, so we're going to put them back in. Uh, I believe it was just those four, oh no, and this one. I don't think I've found any other one so far that are popped out by default on the cold and dark state, but I will put those all in. It's fine. GPS date checked. One two two. This way we are on Vatson. Emergency frequency on the right. Well checked. Server's idle. Everything is fine here. Well 
checked and said we're going to tune anything here. Auto system one, auto port on above, standby. The 2000. All right, 37 degrees. Opal pass has already been inserted. Life plan gives us us an exit 12. Who is level 350? Life plan. Departure runway is roll five. Deco 7 Charlie. We'll insert that. For the arrival, we're expecting runway 1 4. The relax. To Alpha. Via Amiki. Insert. Alternate flight plan, runway 14, OSID insert. Um, I believe it's already in the flight plan. Yep, it is. We'll just put in the arrival to Geneva, which is runway 04, form 1 Papa, and we'll just insert that. Flight plan. We can go fix info. To the engine out. When we drove five. Tracking four eight till twenty five miles. And uh, we don't need anything else. Rad nav. Like Hamburg VOR. On the left. Net B. Log field should already be on, 6 tons, which means we can set the seatbelt signs to on. We're expected to drill fuel aids, 58 to 2. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing good. And uh, we'll check calculations here. 5% is fine, 30 minutes is fine. Alternate 1.0, our flight plan calculated. 1.6, so we'll plug that in, and it calculates 0.2 extra, which is fine. Extra fuel on board, 3 tons, distance, 454, that's checked, extra fuel on board, 3 tons, our flight plan says 3.1, so this should be good. Alright, performance, 5,000. In a DP1 for this airport, so 1,532. Or in this case, we would actually round, so 30. And uh, 3,030. And then the engine, and then this would be 1,600. Flaps 1, 68. 49, 49.51. Progress. Cruise 350, Optimum 350, recommended max 381. Turn runway is 05. Have accuracy is high. Distance is checked and this is fine as well. For secondary, copy active. Plug in. Hamburg is our new destination. Arrival, ILS 05. Secondary, performance. And plug in the descent. Information um, we don't need that, but we'll plug in this one five thirty. This is not correct. This should update correctly, but it doesn't. At least according to my experience, so sixteen hundred it was. There we go. I'm gonna go back to init B page. Okay, the FMGC is programmed so far. Constraints, VOR, VOR, we'll just set range of 10, initial climb expected to be 5,000. But airport on this side, this is fine. And all 
this looks good. Obviously the real oxygen test is a little bit different. So this is a check climb, now blue flight track 1 and 2, 5100, about 30 feet, and a, a big difference, unit 1020, it's all checked. This all looks good as well. And uh, yeah, we'll check the pressurization. Turn that count else, it should be our current elevation. Not sure why it's not. And this is set and checked. It is. It says cat 2, which is very interesting. Didn't have anything in the status. Um, I think this is a Phoenix problem, though, occasionally. But we'll see. I think it goes away eventually. Alright, filling and boarding is completed. That means we can set the fuel pumps to on. And we're pretty much ready to go. We've got 10 minutes to go. We're going to do the cockpit preparation checklist. Um, I have to think, is it on here? I don't think it is. Let me just get my checklist real quick. We'll have the old checklist. So I'm going to use the old checklist, I guess. That's fine. So before start checklist above the line, log with security check, check and enter departure briefing completed. Copper preparation completed. Cam sign on, auto, and arm with yours. Um, nav. Fuel. Six tons requested and set and balanced. RF 1020, 1020, and 1020 set. Parking brake is on. Four star checklist above the line complete. So we got our final load sheet, so we can accept that, and we're gonna update our final values, do a final takeoff calculations, and uh, we should be good to go. I forgot to do one thing, we're gonna do in it at the wind request. And there we go, it's already in. Sweet. Now, this could change a little bit. Or not. So 58.2 is checked. I also know the way I know how the ACAR system works is you have to go next page through this. So this is also, I don't think, quite correct. But to be fair, I have to, I have to admit, the, this entire menu here is not what I know. It's completely different. It's more accurate to the uh, FS Labs, indeed. FS Labs have done the closest to what I, my company, know. Um, but this still works, of course. So, load sheet 58.2, next page. Zero fuel weight, center of gravity 31.5. Plug that in. I forgot the slash, probably. 31.5. And that is set. We'll go back to departure. We will sync to the final load sheet. We'll set temperature to 28 and the QNH to 1019er. And calculate that. So, 68 down 0 0.3, 52, uh, 42, 42, 44. That is entered. 5,000 set, nobody's online on Batsim, nope. Oh, actually. <clears throat> I don't know, okay. I'm gonna, gotta, we'll go ahead and start the APU. Alright, so we're ready for pushback. Beacon comes on. We're gonna go ahead and request pushback through GSX. Uh, I don't have pushback express right now because I didn't activate it. For some reason, it always requires activating if you don't use it for a while, so I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and prepare for pushback and departure. Hopefully it doesn't screw us around because GSX is sometimes funky. 
Oh, look, there's somebody online. Beacon on. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Perfect. Windows, doors closed, thrust service idle, parking brake on, edge pressure is close to the green, which is fine. Wait for nose wheel steering to disengage. What the before start checklist here after forwards. Status cat 2 still. Departure check completed. I has been inserted. Probably will be gone once we start our engines. Which shouldn't be there. Release parking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Below the line, take up data set, beacon on nose restrictions, distance gauge checked. Nose wheel steering disengage check when the doors and slides close and arm door. Close unlock. Oh. Ignition. And starting engine two. And starting engine one. Unlocking gear. Tow truck disconnected. Pipe has been removed. Left is clear, right is clear. Alright, after start checklist, anti-ice is off, pitch trim 29.9% .9 set, weather trim zero, you can set us as checked, and that is the after start checklist completed. Traffic taxiing the runways row five via Golf Delta One. All right, taxi light on, brake brake release. With some thrust, because the ground physics aren't very good. Check.
Hamburg traffic lining up runway 05, Hamburg traffic. Hamburg traffic departing runway 05, Hamburg traffic. Man flight 68, SRS runway, out of blue. Press the set. coming up. Nav. Now this plane is sensitive from what I'm used to. Let's climb, auto thrust, back one. Pops up. Five hundred. Land. Hundred above. Minimum. Continue. One hundred. 
50, 40, 30, 20, retard. Okay, I just learned the hard way, no pun intended, to not use the real world fly, uh, flare technique on this airplane. You start the flare at 30 feet, but it did not react at all. So I quickly pulled back the stick and it turned into a hard landing. So, yeah, physics not the best, but whatever. If I were to do this on a Tolis, I've actually done this. Actually, you can see the technique, I think, in my last video with the Tolis. I mean, I do it exactly like I would do it in the real simulator, in the level D simulator. And uh, it pretty much reacts just like it, so. I explained for the win.